Doctori, tutta post, welcome back to a new video about C and C++ libraries. That is a set of C++ platform abstraction libraries for macOS, Windows and Linux that has very fast compile times, is bloat free, it's simple and readable, there are no crazy C++ constructs inside with a few exceptions here and there. Um, it's easy to integrate and there are no C++ standard library exceptions uh, used anywhere and no third party dependencies. Even if today we will see how to use a um, library together with same C++ library, uh, libraries, actually a couple of libraries. Uh, you can get in touch by looking at the Discord or joining the, joining the Discord on talking to me directly on Twitter, X or Mastodon and even on GitHub discussions. But now that's all for the introduction. Let's go and try to see what we're going to do today. So today what I would like to do is creating um, a graphics application of a simple window of application uh, that will be the base for some other experimentations that I would like to do with C++ libraries. This window needs uh, to be able um, to draw itself using a couple of libraries. One is the Sokol library. That is a very nice library that allows you to do a bot a Windows abstraction and a, a graphics API abstraction. It's a crazy good library written in C. Please check it out if you don't know it already. And then we are going to use the quite famous Dear and GUI library. Um, so, but this will not be a classic game loop style library uh, usage. I will try to use it in a, in a way that a regular 2D GUI program would be used, which means without redrawing the window at every frame, because that is uh, quite taxing on uh, CPU. Um, even when, especially when you use it on mobile, because it never lets the application to sleep and it's consuming the battery. Uh, so we want to redraw only a user interaction, which means just when, for example, a mouse is moving or a keyboard is typing something. To do so, we have to create our SC example, which will be uh, the application that will be hosting this um, example. Even to create that, let's say, let's start with a uh, hello world, um, int main, int char, let's just return zero. We need to instruct the build system to generate files for that. So we see we have no projects here. The build system for C++ libraries is integrated in C++ library itself. So I kind of bootstrapped or self-hosted this build system called SC build. That for now it's a toy build system. It, it's really only be usable for the libraries themselves because I just keep adding the features that I need as I need them. Um, but I suspect this will grow and become better as time is passing. This is for now able to build the test project already with some not so simple configuration. You can have multiple you know, configurations with coverage and adding defines, includes, adding files. It's making all of the files relative to a project directory. So it's already very nice in my opinion. Um, and it's generating files for Xcode, Windows, um, so Visual Studio 2019 and 20 and also make files. So I am now going to, um, yes, let me copy this one. So I will make it build example project. Um, to build the example project, let's give it a name, which we already decided it's going to be SC example. Example. So this will be example project name. Example project name. Um, yes, let's add the project here. Build example project. We are pushing it into the workspace. So there is this concept of the workspace and you have multiple projects in the workspace, kind of similar to pre-make. That's actually where I got a little bit of inspiration. Even if I plan to do things a little bit differently from pre-make as, as time is passing, I'm already doing things a little bit different. 
but the overall data structure, I think it's, it's quite similar or at least inspired by that project. Um, we don't need all of these includes and the defines. I just like to have a debug and release. We definitely don't want to be adding the tests for this project. I want to add examples sc example yes all the cpp files i don't want to have anything else we are adding the C++ libraries uh in this with the same code that is adding them to the test project which is very cool uh, this is not the fastest way to integrate the library because it's compiling all of the single files while well, this will be a lot faster if it was a unity build file which we do have in the binding cpp sc.cpp but i prefer to have them separated and paying for whatever extra time will take to compile because it's it's fast enough anyway so i don't i don't really care um let's generate the project now so by running generate project this is calling a command which is sc uh, build configure as you can see sc build configure this is calling the sc build it's compiling the sc build file together with the bootstrap tools cpp executing it and this is generating the project this is how sc tools are working even there are other tools which you can uh, look for in the github uh, repository but now let's see was the project generated yes we have sc example so let's uh, open it using xcode which is my kind of favorite ide which is unusual i guess Okay, SC example, error. Yes, we have tests here. We definitely don't want to compile tests. So let's ex exclude the tests. So one thing you can do after you add files or directories, you can remove files using a mask. So I can say mm, libraries because the root directory of the project is the library directory, which is the root of this project. So I'm going to remove everything. I think the convention is to call the, the folder just tests. Yes. So I can say anything with uh, tests. Yeah, asterisk. I guess this will work. Will it work? I don't know. Let's try it. Remove all tests. Um, hopefully the testing library, yeah, it's called testing. So it shouldn't match the, um, that, uh, mask generate projects, generating projects. Let's see, no new line at the end of the file. And this is compiling. So we have a wonderful empty project to start with. We have all of the libraries, we have our example, we have the bindings, which we don't need. I mean, I guess we can remove the bindings as well. Let's remove them. Bindings. Yeah, let's remove all of the bindings. Can we just remove them? Uh, hmm. Oh, should oh because this is filtering. Should I do it? Asterisk dot asterisk. I don't even know, actually. Yes. Anyway, yeah, I, I can probably clean it up a little bit better. We don't need all of the libraries extra and the support. Actually, it's not that much of work. Um, and. Uh, what about the support? Uh, let's see, build error for 2019. What's going wrong with this one? Hmm. So it's not liking the support. Let's see. Mm. 
Oh, it's just the debug visualizers. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll leave it like this. That's that's fine. I don't care about the extra libraries being compiled. So, um, what should we be doing? I would like now to download and integrate the um, I'm GUI library. Include tools um, sc package dot h and when integrating the package dot h i would like to yeah maybe let's open this into the test project which adds the sc build file so it's actually it's actually sc test dot x project because I'd like it better, I get better completion here. So this compiles. Let me add result download Sokol library because that's the library we would like to use to download the, the library. But we want to download the Sokol library from Git using Git. So package library let's see how does the use get uh, can't remember <laughs> how this is used we have sc package okay let's copy a little bit how it works we have this download we output a package object okay let's let's do it like this download package directory so we need the directories which come from build directories i guess const and we output a package return result true what else do we need we need a package name a package version uh let's say Sokol package version let's pick this hash file this hash sorry the the, the git hash we don't need all of this many characters how many do we need i don't i can i can never remember um Okay, we need to this use git clone through. We don't want to be linking this. We have a flag to link. Yes, create link false. Use git clone, create link. Um, we definitely need custom functions and we want to customize the test function oh but i'm again in code <laughs> sometimes i get i get confused with myself i start things in xcode and then i i find myself in in code in, in visual studio code that anyway i think i have um a ready test function that should verify git hash because this is the function that is used to when installing the package it's checking that the package was installed properly so let's see this is tools package so we need a using namespace maybe uh, let's define this download Sokol in the package namespace because it's probably better namespace package no I see tools yeah let's define it in the tools and yes let's map it like this and let's map also the packages installed directory 
So now the test function, there is a get, I created a get test function in SC package, it should be in the header. Verify git commit hash, yes, which does the rep parse head. So this function is uh, testing uh, that the package is valid by testing uh, if the rev hash, this one, rev parse head hash corresponds to the package version. This should be working. So let's download Sockle while we are doing this. Download Sockle. Um, yeah, let's SC try this. Oh, we cannot SC try because this is returning the project. Yeah. Well, let me let me do it like this for now, and then I will fix it. Parameters directories. So this should be the build directories. What else do we need? The package, right? Yes, package. This will be package. This is tools package sockle package. And let's put it here. Is this even compiling? Yes. So let's make this result. Let's put it the project here, project. So project becomes like this and we don't return project, we return result true. I should have been doing this from the beginning, but uh, yeah, let's see, try project project parameters and project push back project i guess we can move it as well uh yeah maybe i will need to fix also this one result project project return result true and Yes, so we can make the build test project and push back the project. Um, yeah, we shouldn't be really moving this thing two times. So let's make project, let's make two projects. First project, we make it here. And the second, we move it here. Yes, this looks good. Let's try to configure now. Generate project. Okay, this is generating project, but it's not downloading this one. Why? Is it even calling the function here? Hmm. Let's SC try this. Build. Generate project. Okay, we have an error. We have an error. Is the error coming from Sockle? Yes. So this is failing. So should we initialize the package name? I don't remember. Let's see some example in the package file oh these are complex ones hmm package name package version file md5 url oh we need the url don't download dot url 
where is the URL of so called GitHub? Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's cloning. Beautiful. Now, if this is working, we should have packages cache so called so called dash underscore actually um, whatever is the hash file. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, let's do the same for Angui. Download dear Angui. Dear I'm GUI. I think I know the URL just out of my memory. <laughs> I'm GUI. And um, hmm. Let's choose the yeah, the one this version. I think I've tested that this is a good version. I like stable versions, so let's use the DRM GUI. Download it as well. I guess we will be improving this DSL for downloading packages. We could probably make it fully declarative and express it into some JSON file. I'm, I'm still deciding how this should work, but taking this incrementally for now, this is this is good. So let's say this is a dear I'm GUI package. And if I now run the task, it's cloning also dear I'm GUI at the version that I have been requesting, hopefully, which is this just zero six, whatever. Yeah. 0, 0, AD, 3, C, 6. If I configure things again, yes, nothing is downloaded. But if I delete it, it should be downloaded, downloading it again. Beautiful. So that this works. So that's what, what the verify is doing. The test function, function, the verify git commit hash will just delete it and redownload it if it doesn't match the hash, which is, you know, what you expect this, how you expect this to work. Now that we have these two packages, I want to add them into my project. So let's say add directory, so called package. Um, dot package local directory. Yeah, all of these comments are just not right. And I want to be adding also the DRM GUI package. Um, yeah, here we want to be adding asterisk dot CPP. For the, no, the circle is a header only, not header only in the sense it's only defined in headers, then you have to define it, define implementation, um, define somewhere and compile it there. While for the DRM GUI, it's more classical. So we have CPP files, CPP files. Well, let's try this. Let's do it incrementally. Uh, of course, I'm just copy pasting the wrong stuff. Generate project. Uh, can I can I make this proper without getting it wrong every two seconds? Yes. So let's see what do we have. We have our. Oh, that's the test project. We want the example project build packages cache DRM GUI we have all of the CPP files and for so called we have all of our header files so for so called 
I think, especially on Mac, there is a one additional problem that we need to compile this as a objective C file. So I need to create se example dot m. Yeah, let's say example sockle dot m. And maybe let's do also C file. Let's see example sockle dot c. So this one will just include a C example sockle dot C file. Actually not this one, sorry, this one. And this is where we will be including sockle. Let's make it also on a header. A C example sockle dot h. So we can as the example sockle dot h we can define here whatever is the the macro that will make s c sorry sockle app to compile um Okay, is it like Sokol imp? Well, we'll see. I guess we can try to open Sokol app. Oh, this will probably not come. Huh. Oh, because we, we are not adding this file. Let's add this file. So asterisk.cpp and we want to add, well, if project dot not the project we want the parameters dot platform is mac os is uh, build platform mac os or parameters platform is ios which we don't fully support yet but who cares let me just add it I can add sc example asterisk.m instead for everything else so on Linux and, and Windows we can be adding the C files. How does it sound like? Generate project. We do have the M file now. Okay. Okay, maybe I will define things here and then move it to the C file. Um, yeah, let me copy this here. So many errors. Sokol app, unknown 3D API defined. Okay, um, we need to define Sokol metal. Let's add also the header so we have it in the project view. Asterisk.h. We have the header. Okay. So if we are on um, Apple, we want to define define Soco metal. Um, if we are on, yeah, I mean, we can check it, I guess. Yeah, if we are on Win32, we should be on D3D11. Is it D3D11? Hmm, yeah, this one. And if we are on Linux, is this the one for Linux? Yes. Define Sokol dot. Um, um, yeah, we want gel at yes, because I'm using this in a VM. So I shouldn't probably be trying to do anything else. Otherwise we do. Yeah. On 
important platform. Is it so-called GLES, the correct one? Yes, GLES3. Oh, this changed. Okay. Implicit conversion. Oh, oh yes, I have warnings set to the top. So we need a pragma, uh, CLANG, diagnostic push with ignore. Oops, let's do it. Um, then we need to pop it. This needs to be if def clang. Um, yeah, it's if clang. And if this is going to be a long video. Let's see what is the name of this warning that is making our life so miserable. V implicit, W implicit float conversion. Implicit float conversion. <coughs> well, the errors went away. We have other problems. Duplicate main. Oh, so Sokol is defining main. Yes, I remembered this. So, well, we're just not defining our main. I'm going to include as the example Sokol.h. Um, what else do we have? Undefined symbols. Sokol main. Oh, we need to define Sokol main. So let's see. Um, samples. Sokol samples. Soggle app examples, I have already seen the one I like, which is the I'm GUI. I'm GUI Soggle app. All right, so I'm going to do this. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's define the Soggle main so we are not getting all of these compile errors and we can fix them one by one. Let's do hmm, as the example uh, cleanup. Well, this we will need to redefine. This ones we don't need. Uh, what else do we have? Das dot yeah, IDPI, we definitely want the IDPI. Uh, yeah, the clipboard, let's do the clipboard. All right, this compiles. Which is good. I was expecting to needing to link some of the metal libraries, I guess. Oh, because I've not been adding so-called so GFX yet. So include so-called GFX. No, oh, this, this is even working. Wow. Um, all right. So I can just say so-called, well, so-called imp should be enough for, for all of them, right? Well, beautiful. Let's just continue copying and pasting code, which is what I like to do. Initialize. Yeah, we need to declare some statics. Well, let's let's include also the MGUI first. So we get we we are also making sure that this is uh, really including all of the necessary headers. So call MGUI MGUI not found. Of course, because we don't have it in our include path. So uh, how do we add it to the include path? Uh, let's go in the SC build file. Add includes, we can add the DM GUI package. And let's add also the Sokol one, why not? 
So these are will be the include directories. Let's regenerate, generate or run task, generate projects. I'm GUI. Oh, now it's Sokol and GUI that is not found. Let's see where is it? Is it like in a subdirectory? Packages, packages cache, Sokol, Sokol. Yes, it's some utility library. So it's somewhere, yeah, util, Sokol and GUI. Yes, it's in the util, util. Excellent. Let's continue copying. Now this should be just copying code around. Maybe renaming things a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's our init. Init, where is it? Init. I would like to do it here because if this is C++, we need to do lambdas <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Let's do lamb lambdas for absolutely no reasons. Uh, I don't need loggers, at least not for now. Okay, we need Sokol glue. Yeah, this is a utility library. Is it in the util? Sokol glue. No, Sokol gl. Where is the glue? We need the glue. Oh, it's a uh, one of the main libraries. Sokol glue undefined symbols so-called glue environment okay hmm Also, implementation is not defined. So this one needs the glue imp defined. Um, yeah. You know what? Let me let me move this uh, here. Yeah. Let's put the glue here. Oh, we need to, well, thankfully there was an error message telling us we need to include this later. This succeeded. Let's copy some more. This is our frame. Frame. Yeah, I'm sorry for this copy and paste moment. But I guess that's like how realistic programming is done. You just copy and paste. So, so much. Let's copy and paste. We are AIs. That's why we copy and paste. But we can add some more flavor to this code, as we will see in a while. Yeah. I, well, I don't want all of these. Let's do it. Let's remove it. Just want like a single window. This one is taking a so called app event pointer. Const event event. Yeah, this looks decent. So if we have been doing proper copy and paste, this should show us a window. Let's do it. Run. Okay, we have a window. Well, I guess we should just say thanks to the author of Sokol library, Andre. This is like one of the best programmers ever, I guess. And also to Omar was programming on GUI in so many years. It's like a beautiful library. Make sure to check them out if you don't know them already, but I suspect you already know them. So just check them out. They are beautiful projects. Um, okay, now let's let's try to add this 
flavor that I that I wanted to be adding. I would like to create a um, function. Let's say um, yeah, this this will need to be extern C because we will implement it into this uh, M file and to into the C file as well. Let's say void suckle sleep. So my idea is that when doing the frame callback, so the problem, let's see the problem. If I if I run this um yeah, if that mm, sorry. Let's make this proper. I don't write enough C to remember all of the rules. So this is um, our function that I would like to define that should be doing the following. Now, as we see the this, this window is continuously drawing. And this is pretty clear, even if we take a look at the CPU usage, this is uh, really taking some, even if this is super optimized software, so it's not, it's, it's not really taking eight milliseconds here. It's uh, probably just waiting for the vsync, of course, um, in order to write synced with the screen at uh, 120 FPS because for just a single window, I suspect this is <laughs> a lot faster. So if you remove the V-Sync, this is, this is going to be going at 1000 frames per second. But the point is we don't want to use any CPU when doing nothing. Like when I'm stopped, I don't want to be using any CPU. That's what I would like to do. Because I'm, my plan is not to do a game for now or to do a game style UI. I want to do a regular boring to the program user interface. So how are we going to do that? We need to hack into the um, event systems that are GUI event systems that are used in these libraries. So let's say we are on Mac. Is this the flag? Oh, it's uppercase, sorry. I can never remember them. Um, then if we are on win32 and then we, if we are on Linux, I don't know how many we can implement, but let's try one by one. Uh, error on supported platform. This is going to be a long video, I told you guys and ladies. Um, Hmm. I have been looking for a function that should be doing this. So the idea is somehow we hook up here such that when this is executing, we can stop the frame callback, wait for the next event when the event happens. Uh, this should be CF run loop in run mode. Yes, I have it in my history because I was looking for this function. So this function runs the current thread CF run loop, which is the GUI event loop that runs in a macOS application because I'm developing on macOS right now. And it will run the event loop. But what we want to do is, um, is something different. So the first parameter, I think we need to keep it to the default. That should be like a default, yeah. CF run loop default or something like that. Where is it? I think I have seen it somewhere. We'll try it. Then the seconds is how much for how much time we need to run the loop. If zero, only one pass is made, through the loop before returning. If multiple sources are ready to fire immediately, only one, possibly two, if one is a version with zero source, will be fired. 
Also, should we be passing zero or double max? I guess this is a double. Yeah, time interval is a double. And then return after flagging, indicating whether the run loop should exit after processing one source. If false, the run loop continues processing events until seconds has passed. No, we want to return immediately. Yeah, so we need to make this one. This one, this one I'm, I'm not sure if we need to make it zero, but I guess we can try. So CF run loop run in mode. Um, this one, we're going to make it true, which means one. This one, we should um, try to make it zero. Let's see if it works. And what about the CF run loop mode? Can I see what is the run loop mode? Um, what is the CF run loop mode? Yeah, default mode. Run loop mode should be used when a thread is in its default idle state waiting for an event. Yes, we need this one, the default. Let's try putting the default mode here. So called sleep. So if I put it here, well, I need to, yeah, but I cannot do it every frame. I need to do it after some time has been passing. So let's include uh, libraries, libraries time time dot h oh we don't have wait a minute ah we are not adding an include path for s sane c plus plus libraries that's really bad add includes we need the current directory format document generate run task generate projects Okay. Now I will do time. Let's see time high resolution counter last event last event dot snap and yeah when we have an event we will snap it as well. Now, if um, yeah, let's do an elapsed um, time relative time relative elapsed is time high resolution counter. <laughs> That's a kind of a long name. So we snap it and we subtract approximate because this is the one returning the relative object our last event if elapsed in rounded upper milliseconds is bigger than time milliseconds I don't know half a second I will I will be stopping so call sleep oh we need the using namespace sc yes using namespace sc let's try to do it mm. this doesn't look to be working Let's add like a frame and frame number. So I can say frame number plus and I can say frame number. Um, frame number. So we can see if this number should be stopping at some point and it's not stopping. Why is it not stopping? So if elapsed is more than 
so we are never entering here right no we are entering oh this is so some parameter here is wrong because we should be blocking until an event comes so it's definitely not zero or i i did not understand correctly this parameter length of time to run the loop if zero only one pass is made through the run loop before return oh but it's not blocking okay <laughs> i was thinking okay only one event no it's only one pass so this is like peak message on windows so i should be sending like double max dbl max let's try it okay this is stopping let's see boom yeah it's stopping now if i do any event in theory so moving the mouse this is yeah this works if i stop it for after half a second it will be stopping and if i start moving the mouse it will resume rendering and when i stop it cpu usage is going to zero of course i need i, I need not to you know without moving the mouse or doing anything so if i start typing or doing something moving the mouse or typing something with the keyboard can i type something here oh there is no control yes 0 0.1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, when I type, this is continuing. But if I stop, it's stopping after half a second. So very, very, very good. Yeah, I guess we can make this uh, a little bit nicer. Like, say, maybe printing like paused or something like that. But maybe we could even make the timeout configurable. But for now, yeah, maybe I will do this out, offline. Good. This is already what I wanted to achieve on macOS. Let's see if I can make this on Windows. So let me start a Windows VM. Hmm. Let's open. Um, yeah. Should we open this? Where is it? Uh, oh yeah, of course we don't have SC example. Uh, yeah, this is slow because it's, <laughs> it's going into the VM let's open it open project or solution um i guess we can go in here mac developer project sc build projects vs22 sc example is this even working or compiling let's see compile please please work no it failed one unresolved external so-called main um what's the external so-called sleep reference it okay because we are not adding this oh yes because this needs to be moved into the c file which i said i would have been doing but i need to do it now so that's what i'm going to do so this should be still working on the mac let's see on windows yeah <clears throat> See if this is working at least if the application is functioning oh we need to make this a windows application okay well the application works which is great but it's not like it's it's just because the sockel library is beautiful that takes care of everything for us but let's see if we can add our own flavor the one thing that i would like to do is adding the flag on windows 
um, flags. Well, I can't remember the name of the flag to do. Where is it? Link flags. Hmm. Link type. GUI application. Okay. Um, get sorry, what is the syntax for this thing? I can't even remember. Link dot uh, yeah, get or create. Yeah. Or just get, I can just get. Get or create link flags with application. Or do I have a set? Can I just get? I can't even remember how this class is supposed to be using. And I, I, I guess this means that this is not a great class. If I don't remember how it's meant to be using. How? <sighs> hmm. Okay. Something like this. or create so I need to say get or create with the type and it's returning a pointer to the object which in case of GUI application it's a boolean right so Because I'm, I should not be accessing the link object. Oh, it's not part of link flags, it's just link. Yes. So much time wasted for something so simple. But yeah, sometimes that's what it is. I. I yeah, probably this, this syntax is not good because if I cannot remember it and I made it, I, it's not good. It's probably meant to be changed. But for now, let's see if this is achieving what we wanted. So this now should make the application a Windows application. So no more console window. Yes, this is working. Excellent. So what should I be doing here? On Win32, the, um, to stop on an I.O. event, so not I.O., sorry, input event from the users, like a mouse move or something like that, we need to do get message, maybe the Unicode version, pointer to the message. We want to do it for all windows. I'm going to filter this, yeah. Maybe we should be quitting if msg dot messages quit message uh, post message. Oh, here we need the window, which we can take it from um, get 
there was like a get h w n d yes win32 get h w n d so this is the handle to the window post message to the window we want to send a vm close not sure if i should be sending any vparam or not let's try it So this is stopping. If I move the mouse, this is resuming. Oh, the only problem is that it stops immediately. Uh, no, it, hmm. It's, is it stopping immediately? No, it's stopping, but it's, yeah, it's eating one of the messages. So we need to try, yeah, first click I do is not moving the window. So that's, that's not good. I need to dispatch the, yeah, I need to dispatch this. So otherwise let's translate message and dispatch it. This is very old code. I don't know how many have been writing win32 loops i did back in the days so i remember how this works let's see okay this is now working yeah this looks good yeah stops after 100 milliseconds sorry 500 milliseconds but if I move the mouse, it's moving. Move the mouse, stop. Move the mouse, stop. Okay. Or let's do with the keyboard. Let me write something with the keyboard. Keyboard, stop. Keyboard, stop. Yes. Okay, this works. So that's what we are going to do on Windows. I suspect maybe there will be some other edge case to handle, but this, this is more or less what we need to do. Let's say if we can make this on Linux as well. Closing Visual Studio. Um, can I just stop this VM? I don't have a computer that is good enough to do everything. Um, control Center. Stop this one. We have a Fedora Linux workstation where I have already been installing what I believe should be required to run. At least I did install what was needed to run a stock Sokol application with EGL. Let's try it. I need to go here, connect to Fedora. All right, so, well, does this even build US C dot SH build compile as the example. So this is compiling the bootstrap. It's Cleaning, yeah, we have errors. So GCC complains about double to float conversion with Sokol app. I guess we can add another case here. GCC diagnostic push. Uh, yeah, we need an elif. Is it like GCC, the macro to check? Let's see, no. Uh, new C, G-N-U-C, yeah, that is the macro. New C if G-N-U, let's push and let's pop. Push and pop. And we need to disable 
float conversion, which is the same, it's just name it differently. Generate projects. Uh, no, we need, sorry. Well, we don't have a task for this. I need to do it manually. Uh, we, oh, there is a dash. That is not correct. Let's try it again. How can I make this a c.sh build compile sc example? Hmm. Oh, because I'm doing pragma c lag. Please work. Well, at least we got rid of that error. So now we have, yeah, all of the undefined references. What should we be adding to our beautiful SC build file? So if we are on Linux, where is Linux? Hmm. If parameters dot platform is Linux project dot link dot add libraries. Let's see what do we have? GL. Well, I guess we need OpenGL, which is the GL library. I think we have the EGL library as well. I know because I installed them before starting the video to run the Sokol example that I tried before starting this. So let's see. We need to configure and then to run. Let's see. Gel, EGL. Something is taking a lot of time. X11, sure. X11. Well, I need to configure. This is invalidating the project, so it's going to recompile it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. If you regenerate a project, this is requiring to be recompiled. What else do I need? X cursor. X cursor and X input. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. X input and X cursor. X cursor. Okay. I remember that I have been needing to install them. So I guess they are required by Sokol on Linux. Beautiful library. Come on, can you can you see any other library that that can be integrated so easily? Maybe the Raylib or similar libraries, but this this are, these are really pieces of art. Um, okay, this works. Let's try to run this. I don't think I have a debugger configuration, but we may not need it for now. As the example, let's start it. Okay, this is crashing. Let's try it inside Fedora here. Because I have already seen even for my Sokol tests that I need to redirect, redirect the display due to how X11 works. So let's try here. Well, maybe I can just execute it without changing the directory. Build outputs Linux SC example. Okay. This is running full speed. You see frame number is changing. This is a Linux Fedora environment. I guess you can can see it. 
Um, oh, address sanitizer is complaining. Um, maybe that's not the right moment to take a look at this. It doesn't look to be in SC library, it looks to be in Sokol, but it probably means that I'm misusing the library somehow. But I will investigate this later and on. It doesn't make sense to do it now. So the function that are needed on X11 to do so is there is a X next event, this one, and we need, um, but this is, yeah, this is of taking the event of the queue. And this is not good because the event loop inside Sokol needs to take this event from the event loop so we need to put it back and i have i have already seen that there is this put back event we cannot use the peak event because we want this function to be blocking such that we will use zero percent cpu and we will not need to poll check for any new event so we need to do x next event this will take our our event off the queue and then put it back into the queue Let's do it. X next event. X next event. How can I use it? I, I think there is a usage somewhere inside Sockle itself. Let's see. X next event. Yes, we need the display. And we need a pointer to the event. Yes, and the display, there is no public API in Sokol. Maybe I should be asking to the uh, author of that library, Andre, to if there if, if it would be possible to expose the display object. But for now, I think we can access this static object because we are in the same file that includes the implementation. So yeah, this, this should be working. Um, x next event. So let's just copy this. Uh, the event. Where is the event? Uh, no. Where is the event object? No, that's not correct. It should be just x event. I don't know. Let's try it. event yeah x event yes and x put back event put back event mm, yeah it needs the display as well well, I have tried this already on the stock Sokol app, so that's why I know what are the function to use. I'm hoping this is working also here, but let's see. Now we don't need to regenerate the project. We can just build the ARM64 version. Oh, why is it regenerating everything? Well, I don't know. Oh, I'm building a C test, sorry. Oh yes, because I don't have a task for that. Let's build it manually, a C example. Yeah, it's compiling just the modified C file. Let's run it again. This is stopping, frame number 22. Moving the mouse, it unblocks. Stopping, it will stop. So, I guess this is the end of the video and I'm really happy about what we achieved. Clearly, I have been preparing a little bit this, all of this uh, CF run looping, run, running mode and get message and X next event is something that I have tried on the Stock Sokol app to implement this uh, zero CPU usage when you're not doing anything and restarting it immediately when you are doing something. I guess there is some um, merge request in the official I'm GUI uh, repo to add this as an official feature. We are adding it as our own feature. And I guess that's why, because we need to have control over that. 
as in one of the next videos I will try to integrate this with our event loop so I need to have a little bit of control over what we are doing here to stop this uh, user interface loop. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful to you and that you learned something. Um, and please make sure to check out the GitHub website for C C++ library or get in touch on the Discord. Let me know what you think about the videos in the comments and see you next time with C C++ libraries. Bye.